All right, Seattle is considered one of the nerdiest cities in the country, and we really couldn't be prouder of that. In fact, this round of New Day Hot Topics is dedicated to all things nerdy and to keep me from nerding out alone. We have invited the hosts of the Northwest Nerd Podcast to join me, Nick Jarin and Dyer Oxley. Thanks for being here, Thanks guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah. We've already been talking about Game of Thrones a little bit off camera, so we're going to oh, yeah. get into all of this. But uh, first, I want to know, like, what is your definition of nerdy, and why do you qualify as being nerdy? Uh, nerdy for me, so for us, one of our driving tenets for our podcast is that nerdy is an inclusive term. Yeah. If you've ever been called nerdy, identified as nerdy, if you can nerd out about like the statistics of something that other people really wouldn't know if they were just average fans of something, you're a nerd. Okay. You can be a nerd about anything. Typewriters, like... He's a typewriter nerd. That's me. Are you, yeah. do you like old typewriters? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. excellent. We can. I got we a have typewriter so much guy about. and everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh He's got a guy. Honestly, though, guy. anybody who's dressed head to toe in like Seahawks gear, y you know, You're how a do you not nerd. exactly? Yeah. Right. It, the, the whole idea that this is just like an exclusive term for this these ne'er do wells of society. Um, everybody is passionate about something. That's what it really comes down to. Okay, but yeah. specifically on your podcast, what sort of nerdy <laughs> things do you tend to cover? Pop culture, science, and technology. So it could be anything from like Game of Thrones. We're doing a series of Game of Thrones coverage right now to celebrate the final season. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also might dig into people who build custom keyboards or people who mermaid. Um, sorry, merfolk. Merfolk, Merfolk so you yeah, know, yeah. Kind of, that's More something inclusive. we learned by doing yeah. that, right. that piece actually, right. is that they, uh, they identify by merfolk. And uh, yeah, it could be really absolutely anything. If you're passionate about it, if you can really nerd out about it, yeah. mm -hmm. we'll talk about it on our show. Okay, yeah. well on that note, why don't we get into our hot topics? Let's because the first one is, what is the nerdiest franchise? Which is, pr I feel like that's pretty difficult to... Star Trek. Star Trek? <laughs> I, Star okay, Trek. evidently not difficult at all. Um, no, because I think you could find a lot more popular franchises, like especially right now, Game of Thrones, everybody's probably freaking out about that. Mm -hmm. Star Trek has had the, the lifespan, but also Star Trek doesn't get as much, um, if we're gonna talk about nerdiness, it doesn't get as much attention, I think, as the other stuff. Star Wars is a lot more popular, but people really hang on, they're really passionate about Star Trek. I would also throw in there that Star Trek is one of the more scientific of the franchises. So, it, like, a lot of stuff you see in Star Trek, we get in actuality. Right, and they so. had it on screen long right. before we had right. it in actuality. Yeah. Yes, right. that's the pace. How about you? For me, I mean, partly because it's top of mind, so it might be recency bias, but Game of Thrones, to me, like, when someone pops up on screen and I'm like, that's Beric Dondarrion, the Lightning Lord. <laughs> he was originally dispatched by Ned Stark when he was Hand of the King to go uh, round in Sir Gregor, a.k.a. the Mountain. That's intensely nerdy to me. Like, that's, that's information that I don't need to know. <laughs> I also feel like it's nerdy because as you're saying that, I'm like, no, yes, all of yeah, that is true. That yeah, that's out. correct. Yeah. <laughs> I also, though, think that Star Wars has a longevity and a reach that is um, maybe the most popular mm -hmm. in terms of general audiences. But, you know, when that most recent trailer dropped, I was just like, agape and watched mm -hmm. it like six times. And it filled me with joy from my childhood, which I think is kind of cool. All of these, though, we should say, and are you worth cried nerding a bit, out on. Right? Okay. When, come on, when Carrie's on there, when Princess Leia's on the oh, screen. Yeah. I'm not ready. Oh, the general. Yeah, I'm not ready, yeah, for, was, I'm not, I'm not ready <laughs> for it either. Okay, yeah. so on that subject, um, we're going to go to our, our next topic, which is uh, this uh, YouTube reactioner. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a guy, um, Eric Butts is his name, and his whole YouTube deal is that he watches things and reacts to them in real time. And he recently had a reaction to the very thing that we were just discussing, Star Wars trailer. Mm -hmm. And here's what happened. immediately started getting flack for this, right? People started attacking him online and saying all these terrible things about him, to which someone of prime Star Wars importance mm -hmm. responded, right? 
That is, first of all, that is the appropriate reaction to Lando. <laughs> I all feel right? that way if too. If you see Lando, that is the appropriate reaction. Yes, and look at Mark Hamill, right? Mm -hmm. Luke Skywalker himself writes, thanks him for sharing that kind of reaction um, and says, I salute you. What was your impression of not only the sort of like mean comments that he got, and then this sort of outpouring of support. Mark Hamill was just the beginning, right? The screenwriter wrote him, a bunch of other people involved with Star Wars wrote to him. Yeah, this is, so I have a, a probably contentious relationship with Reaction YouTube because on the one hand, it's, it's emblematic of what's been so great about the explosion of nerd things being so popular now. Like the internet made our communities easier to find each other, like a kid in a small town right. in Iowa can nerd out about Star Wars with another kid from like Encino or mm -hmm. whatever. Like we're all connected now. And part of that is reaction YouTube where it's kind of like checking in on your friends a little bit. Like even though you don't personally know these people, you get to be along the ride for the emotionality of what they're experiencing as well. Because you just watched the trailer and now you maybe you don't have someone you can call immediately. Like maybe your mom isn't also into Star Wars. <laughs> um, so you go on and you watch these videos and it's it's clearly over the top. Right. Like you might cry a little bit, but you're not like <gasps> <sighs> like really yeah. like boosting yourself up about it. So that's I get part of why the performance art of YouTube though too, right? Yeah, that's what gets for you sure. the clicks. That's why YouTube voice right. is a thing. Right. Um, so I get why some people would would make fun of him, but that's also part of being an online person. Right. I mean, we get made fun of for filling everything. The blank. Yeah. Everyone really? gets made fun of yeah. for everything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, typewriters. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go back to that. I'm not yeah, surprised. I'm also not surprised that that's Mark Hamill's response. That's just his personality. Yeah. There's a lot of actors who have had iconic roles and maybe try to shy away from them and be, oh, I'm a broader actor. Yeah. Mark Hamill will pick up a lightsaber and go on screen. He's totally into it. He's also just one of the best. Um, Subjects of fandom you can I think have. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah, he's just one of the best people at using person. emojis. I didn't realize yeah. he was signing his name Mar Camel emoji. Yeah, <laughs> Camel. I know. Yeah, it's pretty. He's pretty creative. Okay, so another thing recently happened that got a lot of blowback online, which was George Lucas mm -hmm. oh, yeah. named his favorite character from Star Wars, and out of all of the characters in all of the galaxies, he chose Jar Jar Binks. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. Okay, why are you not surprised? Is he just doing this to pick a fight with people, or does he genuinely feel this I way? I think he genuinely feels this way. I I don't know. We can speculate on a, a million different ways. Maybe he had less yes men around when yeah. he made Star Wars and actually had people saying, maybe that's a bad idea. And by the time he actually made Star Wars and people would just let him do whatever he wanted and when he made Jar Jar Binks, nobody was around to say, maybe not. You know? Yeah. Um, but these, <laughs> I mean, he made it obviously for children. This is the latter Star Wars, or the prequels, were more for kids. And um, Jar Jar Banks is definitely trying to capture that uh, Ewok nature that, that Star Wars has always had. Right. Um, but it just was not, it wasn't successful. It wasn't performed very well. Maybe in his mind, yeah, that, that could be his favorite character. But I mean, right. I, it's totally understandable what the rest of reality can see that that was not. You know a good the choice. one thing that fixes Jar Jar Binks? Just not make him a droid. Okay. If he's yeah. a droid, he's just like C3PO or R2D2, and suddenly it's like way cuter that like he's yeah. over the top and ridiculous. You're right. I was going to say maybe the one thing that fixes him is just to keep him out of the movie. Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. from any time that yeah. they re release uh, yeah. the Blu ray. Oh, okay, we That's only brutal. have time for one more, but oh, we, wow. we have to talk about it because it's the week. Right. Avengers Endgame is here everybody with and I love that like this is the poster when that's like 1 16th of the actual cast right. that we're really expecting to see in the movie. <laughs> what are you guys expecting? I assume you already have your tickets. When are you seeing it? What is happening? I, I'm seeing as fast as I can this weekend. So I have a group of people. Uh, we're all going out. Uh, Pre-sales pre of these tickets basically broke the internet. Websites went yeah. down. Um, I think all three Avengers films are in the top 10 selling films of all time. Mm -hmm. So this is probably going to break that. And actually, Black Panther is the fourth mm -hmm. one in there. Um, I, it, I was shocked. I realized this today. If you were 10 when Iron Man came out, right? A 10-year-old that went to see Iron Man and grew up with this. You could go see Endgame and celebrate with a beer today. That's how long <laughs> these movies have been going. That's how long this narrative has been working itself up mm -hmm. since 2008 to now over 20 films. And this is like the, 
Yeah. yeah. So this is a big deal. This is something to cry over. Yeah, right? that yeah. is yeah. something to cry over. Yeah. And so, and it, it, this is deserving of the worldwide panic attacks that people are having trying to get their I tickets. I mean, I don't have tickets yet, <laughs> and I'm going to kind of buck my nerd cred here because I'm not that excited about this movie. Oh, what? I think that it's overblown. I think that the Avengers movies writ large are much more successful as a marketing campaign than actual creative endeavors. Like Infinity War was the best one. The first two are not good films. They're just We've not had good arguments films. about this. One. Well, and, and I would also say, like, Captain America uh, Winter Soldier was probably tops my list. Yeah, of, yeah. but again, like, films. not yeah. an Avengers movie. Right. Like, there's no. Well, movie. yeah, but I mean, <laughs> and, okay, we've argued about this at length on I know, the podcast. I feel like you guys are getting, <laughs> yeah. This is like a live is, look yeah. at what their podcast yeah. is all about. So we want to direct you guys to that podcast, Northwest Nerd Podcast. Episodes come out on Thursdays. They are currently all in on Games of Thrones, obviously, but to catch up on what you've missed out on, just go to our website to get a link to the podcast. Thanks for being here, you guys. Super fun. Thank and you. coming up, we are heading to the kitchen to make a dessert from one of Leavenworth's most popular restaurants. Be right back.